What's been great in working with Head Office Space uh, as well as Microsoft and actually being part of Dentsu, I'm really fortunate in that my role is all about creating new products, new services, and working with great partners. And at Dentsu, we always say we want to create the never before. And really with the tools that Microsoft yeah. have that are accessible to everybody, and head office space platform, that's what we're doing. And so you, you probably saw some of it in the video, but there are a lot of the first of its kind experiences that we're bringing here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And Charlie, from a LinkedIn perspective, keen to get your thoughts. Yeah, this is super exciting. I mean, one of the things that you we keep hitting home on is around collaboration, right? Um, starting from the collaboration between Dentsu and LinkedIn, uh, and LinkedIn's global agency development team to inbound this and better understand what's the opportunity. Uh, we understood and, and collectively that there was value here. Value not just between the organizations, but also for buyers and sellers, for companies and their partners, and also for hiring managers and the greater talent ecosystem. So as a result, the Dentsu Next Space is able to utilize the LinkedIn uh, login API, which enables over uh, excuse me, from LinkedIn's um, professional community, over 875 million members, wow. to utilize that connection for um, the professional identity space and their ability to log in to the, the next space for connecting within the uh, ecosystem. Unbelievable, no, it's, it's, it's great. A lot of great feedback on, on the back of Unveiled on that too. And going to the master builder, Marco, <laughs> tell, us, tell us a bit about from your perspective. Well, uh, when we started, uh, we, our goal was to build a productive metaverse. We wanted a place that you know, we can do business, uh, meet with our team. And since the beginning, we started, like our whole team, we work 100% from the metaverse. So when these wonderful companies, Denso, Microsoft, and LinkedIn uh, came along, we saw it as being the best opportunity because they are the masters of productivity. Their tools are essential for building the future of the metaverse. And we're more than lucky to have this team with us and to have uh, their support to really build the productive metaverse, an operational system that can integrate cloud and the metaverse and all these wonderful tools that we we are discovering together <laughs> absolutely yeah i couldn't agree more and you know on the back of tools you know dancing next base has a purposeful and thoughtful approach right you can can you share a bit more about you know why virtual experiences are so important for brands uh, especially when it comes to networking you know learning and development retail uh, and innovations. Um, you know, I'd probably like to kick off with Charlie if that's all right. Yeah, no problem. I, I think, you know, when you think about over the last couple of years, uh, go even pre pandemic, you think about where we saw digital taking a larger role in terms of the, the, uh, the area and space of networking, even learning and development where folks were looking at accessibility, um, where they can find that type of information and be able to leverage it. Um, when we went into the pandemic and then even over the last 12 months with macroeconomic and, and, area, and, and areas of focus like that, um, it's really about helping brands and um, individuals be able to connect and better understand how they can leverage different types of resources, make that connection, and also for from that networking perspective, find each other um, as they look for efficiencies throughout. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, that kind of takes you on to, from a learning and development perspective, Simon and Val, you know, I'd love to get your thoughts. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you talk about making a purposeful experience, and that's exactly what we wanted to do. Um, Charlie touched on it nicely in terms of having the access to LinkedIn, uh, but we wanted to create a space where we can not only train and educate our team and our partners, but also help brands how they can do that with partner onboarding, for example, um, making learning more accessible everywhere and really getting teams, you know, rallied around, um, you know, their community and culture. I think culture is really key, uh, especially with teams working globally, like all of us here and all of you all out there too. Yeah, and I think whether we're talking about you know, retail or learning and development. I think one element that's really, really important about what this really is from a Dentsu Next Space perspective is also bringing the element of fun, right? I think we spend a lot of time in virtual meetings and things of that nature, right? But this is really taking it to another degree, right? I think what you're seeing is the ability to use Microsoft technology 
that you know, a lot of organizations use today, uh, whether that be the Power Apps, you know, whether that be Dynamics 365, mm -hmm. um, and which is critical for a lot of data, right, in terms of how that's being used around all these different organizations. But then if you think about it even further, things like Microsoft, that Microsoft has developed, like Microsoft Designer, for, for instance, mm -hmm. right, which enables things to be done using speech-to-text technology, you know, making things super, super simple. One of the things that I like about where this is going, right, from a brand's perspective, is it's making it simple, right? Mm -hmm. This is a space where people can really engage differently uh, for the very first time. These things are hard to put together. The technology, the infrastructure, the cloud performance, everything that goes with that is really, really hard. And what you've seen here, right, is the ability to see these virtual experiences be made very consumable, right? Ex yeah, exactly, and and you touched on it too in terms of that accessibility. And so whether it is learning and development, whether it is one of the things well you may have seen in the video is virtual test labs. And so really making it easy for companies to be able to uh, quickly pop in different concepts, um, whether it's product ideas, marketing ideas, and getting people, uh, getting that input. And even in one case, we actually were able to save a brand 70% uh, in research and development costs and increased participation by 300% by doing that. And it was fun, yeah, fun. Simon, it was a fun, <laughs> fun. gamified experience. Yeah. And, and one of the things, just to add on the element of fun, um, is from a LinkedIn perspective, in the LinkedIn lounge, we actually create this concept of gamified gatherings. So just like when you go on uh, work retreats or anything like that, and you do those sort of um, icebreakers and they're, they almost like make you nervous or anything, we've actually created almost a game show-like experience in the LinkedIn lounge, again, to kind of break down those barriers. And then just lastly, the one thing I wanted to say, um, Simon, you touched on in terms of the access excuse me, accessibility and ease of tools. So one of the things um, throughout our whole space is each screen in there is a browser. So you can quickly drop in your Microsoft PowerPoint, your web-based tools, if you're into Miro, Mural, or any of those web-based tools, boom, you can drop them in there and quickly come up with concepts. And again, it's fun. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and there's, look, there's a lot going on in this space. But one of the spaces that you know personally I love, you know, is the the, the intelligence center. Can, can you tell us a bit more about that? Um, to you, Val. Yeah, for sure. So our our Dentsu uh, intelligence center. Um, for those of you who saw the video, it's that sort of um, DNA-like structure in there because we want to get to the core of DNA of brands and consumers. And, uh, and in the Intelligence Center, we're actually able to do sort of design thinking workshops in there. We can uh, quickly come up with ideas. And so we really want to encourage brands to engage with us to where we can leverage our own environment for workshops with brands and really encourage brands to get their toe in the water and sort of explore what's possible in those areas before making that big investment. Can we help brands create their own environments and own spaces with these technologies? Absolutely, we want to do that, but we also want to be mindful of a lot of brands are still learning in this space and want to know more, so we want to be able to provide that access. And I think you said something super quick, Paul. Um, I think expectations are rising, right, around people's you know experience with this type of you know virtual experience or whatever you want to call it, right. I mean, you're embedding amazing computer technology into our physical world, right? And how does that come together? What does that really look like? And I think what you're seeing is an example of this being put together that is practical, it's useful, it's fun, um, mm. it's easy to consume, and those things are there. But also on the other side, you've got consumers and people who are watching this, this webcast today, right? They're going, I want to experience it. My expectations are that I'm in there doing that today, right? That's it. Exactly. Uh, that's the plan for the next one, right, Marco? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And uh, just to add into it, we forget that our brains work in 3D and that for the past, since the beginning of computing, we've only been using 2D. And now when we move into 3D, it makes it easier for us to uh, communicate, to understand uh, uh, the environment and to be close to each other. I think the proximity that the metaverse, like being with your avatar next to the other person's avatar, that that builds a connection. You feel like you were there with, with uh, your teammate. And uh, since we started, we see that every time 
we take some, like we have a meeting there or we bring customers. In the next day, they call us and they, they say, oh, I really felt like I was there, that I climbed that mountain, that I went into the, each of those spaces. So they feel like those experiences are real. And that's because our brains, they work in 3D and they don't, it, it, the brain doesn't know how to differentiate uh, from that immersive experience to the real life. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's one of the things that came up in discussion yesterday was really around um, accessibility. You know, we spoke a lot about that, you know, at Unveiled. You know, there's this con confusion around that metaverse must be VR. Um, you know, Val, come to you on this because I know it's a hot topic for you. <laughs> it's a hot topic. It's a passion point, right? Because I do think there's a lot of misconceptions out there that, yeah, like everything's Ready Player One. Everybody's, you know, living in you know, VR headsets, and, and that's really not the case. And what we, we're sort of like, uh, I don't wanna say anti that, but in terms of how we created Dentsu Next Space and working with head office space, we wanted to create um, an experience that is accessible from anywhere, any platform. So boom, open up your laptop, open up your PC, get your mobile device, you know, mobile phone of choice. Um, and by the way, if you want to, boom, put on your Oculus and have that VR experience, you can, but we want to make it, again, more accessible for how people live, move, work, interact. Just one link away, right? Just one link away, yeah. right, Charlie? And, yeah, yeah, and, and what, one quick tie on to all this. I think the exciting part is also just creativity. Um, we've all been, that, that's, what Marco had mentioned was one of the things that LinkedIn's really excited about is the continued emergence of uh, B2B creative and the Dentsu Next Space really helps us to explore a lot more of what that's gonna look and feel like. So really excited about the fun element of that as well. There's there's one thing I wanted to add. Um, sorry, Paul, I know we, we gotta move, but one, okay. thing I, one thing I wanted to add there was um, in terms of a commerce and retail perspective as well. So one of the things that's really cool um, in Dentsu Next Space and working with Head Office Space is that while in our space we can log in with LinkedIn, in working with brands, we can actually integrate into a brand's existing website, customer profile, and loyalty program. Mm. So if you want to create those immersive um, selling opportunities, if you want to ha drive traffic to your website or exclusive events, exclusive offers, um, see what um, kind of products people want to invest, you know, buy, um, we're providing that easy way of doing it. And even in the showrooms, things like being able to quickly um, add a retailer's website in there where you can buy directly from there. Again, trying to make it easy accessible for all the brands. We connect web too without sending to another, like opening another page. You can just connect from within the experience and finish purchasing and that just makes the experience more uh, complete, right? Exactly. Definitely, great, I'm love it, loving the discussion. Uh, and I think that takes me on to, you know, my next question, but also just saying to, to everyone tuning in, thank you for posting all the questions. We are seeing them coming in and we are gonna to get to that, uh, get to Q&A soon. Uh, but, you know, just on, you know, developing Dentsu Next Space, you know, it required the application of, you know, some unique technologies brought together by teams at Dentsu and obviously Microsoft and LinkedIn, first of its kind of features. But, you know, tell us a bit more about how brands uh, can get ahead. What, you know, how can brands get involved and what's in it for them? Uh, you know, I come to, to Val first on this one. Yeah, I mean, I, my biggest advice for brands in this space is really, first of all, explore the space. You know, we, we want to create a platform for brands to be able to do that, but really kind of tinker around, see what's out there, explore the different mixed worlds, the different possibilities, first of all. Um, secondly, I really advise to collaborate to accelerate, and, and we're living that, we're truly living that right now, right? So find the right partners, big, small, who are really going to complement your superpowers and set um, measures of success and what you want your test and learn to look like. And then three, I really kind of close it out with play to win, right? So having those KPIs what's working, do more of that. What's not working, kill it. And, and then just continue to grow and build those experiences. Yeah, definitely. Simon? 
You know, so for me, as I think about brands and where they're going and where the, wh what this means, I think I said it before, right? I said there's an expectation now that brands have a presence in the metaverse, right? Or some mm. physical digital world, right? That is blurred together, whether I'm buying physical or digital goods. I think it's all there. Um, I would say don't wait to get started. This is a perfect application of where you can actually get going relatively quickly, right? That's that's what's great about Dentsu Next Space. I think that's fantastic. Oh, you connect it with LinkedIn and all the different users and you can build your community. I talk a lot at Microsoft about you know the future of this space, right? And if you look at where all of this has gone from, whether it be buying from a retail store or building out content that lives on just one device, now everything is everywhere, right? And, mm. and the expectation is that I can access that in a very seamless way going forward. And whether I'm in a virtual world or physical world, it doesn't really matter. And so for me, it's about thinking about where you are from a brand perspective. And either, I, I'll be perfectly honest here, I think this is more blunt than I've ever been around this. I think you either get on a platform today or you end up being owned by another platform, right? I think it's, right? I, I think... Uh, See Mark and laughing at the end there. <laughs> right? But I, no, it's true. I, I mean, I think there are brands and teams that are getting ahead. You look at some of the ones, if you went out and Google, like who's who's the top 10 metaverse type mm. companies, right? Who's doing more? There are a lot of fashion brands who are already going out. They're selling things mm -hmm. that are more expensive than the physical goods today. Yeah. Um, and they're really look, trying to go ahead and kind of grab those customers. And they've got a perpetual environment where they can market 24 seven to those people and make that really, really rich, right? That's an enormous um, advantage, right? That just should not be lost. Now, I saw some of the questions around data privacy and all those things, and I think that's a lot, a lot, a lot of the things that the companies who are working in this space have to figure out, mm -hmm. right? Microsoft is doing a lot around that, that we don't sell their data to anybody else, right? But we've got to make sure that we have those conversations mm -hmm. as we move forward in this direction. So I think it's, it's a great place to get started. Um, for me, I, I say accelerate as quickly as possible, right, and keep going. Yeah. To add into that, when we look at Gen Z, they already spend more time in the metaverse with their friends than in the real world. So when and they are start, they are getting to the workplace. They are going to shift the the medium, right? And uh, I believe that when we bring, uh, when we're discovering such a new medium, there is not yet a right or wrong or or how you should build your experience. Uh, it, it is a discovery process. What works on an e-commerce is different in a virtual world. Uh, in the end, the virtual world is about building communities, like Simon said. Community is the essence of any virtual environment. Otherwise, it's just an empty uh, pixel space. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and just to add on to all that, I think the, the, the community and component of that is the networking opportunity, yes. right? And so that's where the LinkedIn login opportunity helps to extend in the, uh, that, especially from the professional identity perspective. Um, and, and the other thing that I would mention, which, Simon, you touched on, is really the, the test learn, don't stay behind. Um, th one of the things that we think about is also how can you scale? How can you scale globally? If you're going from a physical space into a virtual space, you know, we spoke about this earlier uh, about being able to expand and, and kind of look at what's your digital opportunity. Um, this is an opportunity to be able to make sure that you're doing it in, the, in an area where you can do the testing like Val touched on and things like that. And so it's exciting for LinkedIn to continue to partner with Dentsu and all the partners here on this panel as we continue to move forward. Yeah. No, definitely, and uh, you know, it makes me think about if a if a company called you tomorrow, Val, and say, oh, keen to get started, have an idea of uh, what we're trying to do, just play those steps out. What does that look like in terms of you know the process? Yeah, I think the the first thing is you know we'd want to know more about sort of their business, their goals. You know, are they a retailer? Or you know, are they a mm. apparel brand? Like, what's what sector are they in? You know, are they B two B? Are they trying to improve their partner training, for example? Are they um, trying to increase sales, you know, and have a new revenue streams, right? So really finding out what their goals is. And one of the things that we set up, we actually call it a space exploration. Pun totally <laughs> intended, you guys. Um, but it's, it's all about having really a, a lightweight sort of um, collaborative workshop to, again, figure out their goals, um, get people into our space, um, tour around, um, come up with some preliminary um, ideas and concepts. As Simon and I talked about earlier, you can just boom, drop in um, some quick concepts in the space um, to conceptualize it. And then from there, we just kind of work out a plan, but we really advise sort of starting small and then building from there. It's a new space, you know, to, to expect a brand to 
you know, drop a huge amount of money on something that's still relatively new, it's, you know, it's not the best advice. You start small, build, build, build on what's working. The process is similar to building your website, right? You have to understand what you're building, what's the audience, you know, what do you want in it, and, and it's, I believe it's the most similar experience today. Yeah, and the it best can part be super difficult or, or simple, right? That, and that's it. And the best part to get the whole team, right? You yes. know, you get the power of uh, Microsoft, LinkedIn, Head Office Space, and Dentsu working together uh, to collaborate to solve those big problems uh, and come out and iterate. And without heavy, like, expensive hardware, right? Yeah. You can <laughs> use whatever hardware you have, and everybody will be able to connect together. Wait, you say hardware, but I also say software. Right, because you That's because true. it integrates with any web tool, like we were talking about, and no download. <laughs> yeah. No download. It, it works like a, a, a Google Meet or a Teams uh, meeting invite. So you just send a link, and and you're connected. Amazing. So keen to get to uh, the audience question. There's a load that's come in. Um, we're gonna we're gonna play this one out. Whoever wants to take them, jump in as we go. Um, but the first one here, how will this help me be more productive, more immersed in my work? That one's from Jasmine. Um, who wants to take this one? I think I'll take this one. <laughs> so we are the first company in the world to work 100% from our space. So we have our campus inside, we have our different meeting rooms, our KPIs, and it's easy for us, like every meeting we have, we have a, a, a designated space for it where it's easy to see everything we need on the walls. They're updated uh, instantly so we can see all our KPIs, our documents, uh, uh, our scheduling, and then we can have all our team inside this room. And it's easy to say, oh, come over here, let's check the performance of this, or let's look into this uh, uh, information without having to send links uh, around and without having to say, oh, do you see this? Oh, no, I see that. So it's re literally keeping everybody on the same page as if we were on the same like uh, real office. And uh, we noticed that since the beginning with all our team uh, together, our team is spread out across the world because it's very hard to find like as much all the talent that we need in a single location. And this enabled us to work together synchronously and asynchronously. So uh, if you speak with our team, they will all uh, praise our culture and how great it is to, to work together and how we are discovering that we are a lot more productive when we are uh, together in our space. We, you know, we, uh, uh, we, we are super close to each other and, and uh, building a, a, a very different culture from what you see in, in the uh, outside world. And I welcome you all to come visit and understand how that's possible. <laughs> Any other thoughts from the wider panel on that? I can. I mean, I could certainly add. I'll <laughs> certainly add. I'll certainly add. Sorry, you can't. Right. So I, I think uh, what Marco t touched on, right? I think is how his organization is using the space to really drive connectivity, collaboration, and everything else. Right. What I'll add is, and from the various different examples that I've seen from hundreds of the customers that Microsoft works with, is there is really no one size fits all. So I think it's going to be about how do you tailor those environments to feel like it's something that you want to be part of. Um, those are small tweaks and changes that can be made through like Dentsu NextSpace, for example, Val, right? That just mean, means they're more valuable, more useful, more enjoyable for the people who are part of that conversation as part of that enterprise. Um, so I think there's going to need to be some tailoring um, and kind of customization that need to happen um, around those experiences mm -hmm. that really make them valuable for people. You can't expect it to mean all, all things to, the, to all people, right? It doesn't work that way, right? And so what the great thing about this kind of space is the ability for you to change it, modify it, make it real, right? And make it feel like it's something valuable for those people. And then if, you know, a lot of people who are working from home, I'm one of them, right? It's great to come to an environment where all of a sudden I can kind of connect differently with people and feel like I'm included. And, and it's an inclusive environment for me to learn, right? Or do things differently. So for me, um, it's not a one size fits all. It's going to take some time for these organizations to find the right balance and benefits around these things together, which will drive the community and the engagement and the networking and the learning and everything else, right? So that's how I see it. I love it. Last thoughts, anyone? We good? 
Look, I've got some great questions still to come. Um, I'm going to go to Emily Chan. Uh, I love this. What are the top three benefits for brands entering into the metaverse? Uh, and is it uh, driving real tangible benefits? I'm going to say one. I'm going to say one. Oh, no, I'll, I'll, so, um, <laughs> I think uh, what uh, a lot of organizations now, especially that we are working with on the Microsoft side, are all driven by data, right? Mm -hmm. So I think if you think about the decisions that organizations are making, whether it be what creative content to make, what things to develop, what products to design, whatever else it might be, it's all based on data and user feedback. Mm -hmm. What you're seeing, right, from this is a metaverse where I now have a perpetual environment where it never stops. I'm getting data 24-7. Mm -hmm. I can understand how people are engaging. That is an amazing tangible benefit that I'm getting from a place where maybe I would only have got that interaction for maybe one or two minutes, whatever they've been. If they were on my website, they dropped off and they were not there. So now I can see them how they're engaging differently. And if you think about how important that is with cookies going away uh, and how you think about how, how I'm going to monetize going forward, mm -hmm. that's a huge tangible benefit for brands in the metaverse, right? To understand that much more differently. So that's just one point that I have. I don't know if anybody else wants to add. Well, anything. I. I love that point, and I'm gonna like break it down into sort of three C's. Okay. Like, oh, okay. I was like, I love C's this question. Now. I love the question, Emily. So thank you. Um, I would break it down into um, community, right? And so, like Marco touched on earlier, and Charlie, obviously building those communities, and that's really super important in this space. The other C that we'll go to is creativity. So really having a new space um, to experiment, to um, try new things, right? And then lastly, I would say the last C to round us out is uh, commerce, right? And really creating those new revenue streams. So as Simon touched on earlier, mm -hmm. you know, brands coming up with new revenue streams. Nike's a great example of that, of creating a completely new revenue stream digital products that are superseding the physical products and tangible like she was asking yes it is tangible like what how brands are benefiting from it already yeah absolutely which uh takes us to the next question uh do you have any user cases life scenarios to share currently in the space so many <laughs> so, so many. Um, I love that question because I definitely want to encourage everybody here to uh, book a tour. Like that's the biggest advice. Book a tour book a with tour, us. And, learn more. And, well, exactly. And and I say that because um, we talk about learning and development, right? As as an area to help businesses. So we have our Densu Metaversity that we worked with uh, Microsoft and LinkedIn on that we are actually putting in practice, but love to take everybody in a tour and show that tangible example of how we're using it in the space. Uh, we think about virtual test labs, right? And so we can definitely give you a tour. Our Merkle virtual retail lab is a great example of that. Um, and then in terms of our sort of showrooming, we have our Shop Next showroom. Uh, and we have a little bit of interactive play in there. So if you come on a tour, you can actually um, demo our real uh, shop next products um, and then from a community perspective you know there's the LinkedIn lounge as we talked about the networking opportunities and gamified sort of networking uh, opportunities too absolutely well you know talking about the LinkedIn lounge um, you know we've got a great question how would brands network in the LinkedIn lounge on an individual level or company and that's from uh, Yvonne any thoughts on that want to jump in yeah, I, I can jump in. <laughs> like, hold on. No, I'll jump in on that. Well, and, and this team did such a great job really collaborating and shaping the lounge space. And what's great about it is mm. we really simplified it. So we have three key areas. One is kind of the main stage. So whether it's um, someone like Charlie from LinkedIn giving you know tips and tools and training on the main stage, or someone like Simon from Microsoft coming in and sort of educating uh, folks, we have that main stage area. And again, to build community, right, and networking there. Um, another area that we have within the lounge um, is the gamified space. And so again, having these almost game show-like um, get to know you experiences. And then lastly, we have networking rooms so that you can go in and um, have sort of networking, business meetings, and that sort of thing. And you can build your event, you can create a, a talk, uh, uh, you know, so many opportunities there. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll just add that I think, so we've talked a lot about the Dentsu Next Space Val and, and the rest of the team, and I think that's a, an amazing 
um, practical application of where Microsoft, LinkedIn, and head, head Office Space have come together to kind of pull something together, mm -hmm. which is first of its kind, right? But I would say that, you know, from a Microsoft broad perspective, there are so many use cases of where this is really coming together, right? This is not just what this is just one of the, the few that are, are really coming to life. But if you think about the metaverse, whether we're talking about the enterprise or consumer or planetary or industrial, right? Yeah. There's so many use cases for this, right? And brands can take advantage of that in so many different ways, mm -hmm. right? So one of the areas that we spend a lot of time on the Microsoft side is around digital twins. I'm thinking about how brands can use that space to really kind of not just think about the consumer experience, but the industrial experience of managing and operating those experiences, right? Those are an entirely new scale uh, that will be required to kind of foresee, you know, kind of make all of the stuff really run the way we'd like it to work together, right? So um, I think this is an amazing practical application of what, you know, technology and creativity can really pull together. From digital twins to education, commerce, Every everything. It's, it's all in there. there. It's, it's all, all in, in there. there. <laughs> you know that that brings us to close to time. But you know, before we close out, scan the QR oh, no code. <laughs> it'll take you to our page. Boom! You can uh, book a tour. If you Welcome to Dentsu Next Space. I'm Neva, I'll be your tour guide to take you through our latest experiences brought together by the teams at Dentsu, Microsoft, LinkedIn, and Head Office Space. At Dentsu Next Space, teams can learn about reinventing retail experiences, amplifying assistance, rapidly prototype ideas, accelerate insights, immersive learning, the power of networking, and more. For the first time, in the Dentsu Next Space, visitors can log in with LinkedIn, a professional community powered by more than 875 million members, to grow their networks, connect with their communities, and engage their audiences. We know team collaboration is important in any business, and it's no different here in the Dentsu Metaversity. Thanks to the power of Microsoft, enabling our teams across the world to upskill and learn new crafts. Using Microsoft 365 products, text-to-speech and forthcoming Microsoft Designer capabilities, we've built an immersive learning experience to power up new starter inductions, employee training, and more, enabling teams anywhere to gain new skills and competencies. This floor is currently dedicated to Microsoft Viva Insights, designed to help teams balance productivity and well-being in the workplace with data-driven, privacy-protected insights and recommendations. Over here, we have the Microsoft Retail Education Space, where retailers and brands can gather, learn and see demonstrations on the latest retail technologies featuring Microsoft Dynamics 365, Microsoft Cloud for Retail, and Dentsu's proprietary ShopNext Retail Innovations. Here at the ShopNext showroom we can educate and inspire teams with hands-on demos of our ShopNext Retail Innovations, scan and know, and unbox it. Our Merkle Virtual Retail Lab features our latest retail innovations and explorations across e-commerce, media monetization, virtual shopping, and more. Imagine creating bespoke experiences for your customers, like this digital twin of a beauty bar. And because your brand is your destination, we have the ability to create experiences that integrate into your existing e-commerce website, customer profiles, and loyalty programs. Hey, let's check out the Dentsu Intelligence Center, our home of future-focused thought leadership, immersive insights, and design thinking workshops. Getting from place to place is easy on Dentsu Next Space. Now, let's take a look at the LinkedIn Lounge. The LinkedIn Lounge is a space where brands can connect through their professional LinkedIn identities to recruit, network, and engage with prospective buyers and customers. We also host industry leading talks and thought leadership sessions on the main stage. One of my favorite spaces in the LinkedIn lounge is the gamified networking area. Down here we've got the Ecosia Forest. Here, you can learn all about Ecosia, powered by Microsoft, the search engine that helps create a better planet with every search. Making the switch to Ecosia is the simplest way to plant trees and be climate active every day. Did you know? Together with Microsoft Advertising, Dentsu have planted over 1.5 million trees across the globe. 
This is just a glimpse of what we've created so far together with Microsoft and LinkedIn. With endless possibilities from the future of Web3, the evolution of the metaverse, AI amplified assistance, and accessible everyday tools brought together to inspire and excite brands about what's next, let's create the never before together.